Hello, my name is Håkon and welcome back to my channel where today I'm going to um, show you something and talk about something that uh, many of you might not know about. Uh, first of all, in front of me, as you can see, there is a good old-fashioned vintage reel-to-reel -reel recorder. Um, and at the moment, this one is not working. It has uh, two dodgy drive belts, it has an amplifier that creates strange noises, uh, it's a valve amp uh, which of course has a really nice sound to start with but it does not work at the moment and it would cost me a lot more to fix this than it would to buy a new one which is a bit of a shame but that is how it works. Um, now I wasn't planning to throw this away though because um, I realized there are some things I can use it for. Um, and I'm going to talk about one of those things today. A while back I saw a product from Landscape Electronics called the HCTT, that is the Human Controlled Tape Transport. So basically what it does is it allows you to insert a cassette tape, a normal small cassette tape, and then it's got two knobs, one for each direction, that allows you to move the tape manually and it outputs uh, control voltage or audio and uh, it's got some other features as well which is really cool that's a really cool concept uh, but one thing i didn't like about it is it, it's very expensive and uh, that's one thing and secondly it also feels very cramped to use a normal cassette tape for this kind of device so i was thinking i have a reel-to-reel -reel recorder that doesn't work maybe i can use that for something similar um and I can, because, uh, and this is something lots of people don't realize, a tape read head is a passive device. Um, that is to say, it doesn't need any power to work. It works on very much the same principle as an electric generator or a dynamic microphone. Um, so when the magnetism that is stored on the tape passes the reed head, it creates a magnetic flux inside the reed head, and that magnetic flux creates an electric current. And that is the current that is then amplified to be what we think of as sound. But the thing is, because it's passive, you can add the amplification somewhere else. You can take the signal out from a reed head, connect it to an amplifier of some sort, like, a, like on a mixer, and you can get the sound out without having plugged in the recorder to power because on a reel-to-reel -reel recorder or any tape recorder uh, the power you plug in goes to running the drive mechanism so it's the capstan and the take-up spool and of course rewind forward uh, mechanism it goes to sending power to the record head which of course needs to have power added to it um, to create uh, the change the magnetism on the tape um, and the erase head as well of course um, needs power and then it's the amplification that needs power uh, but the actual read head itself doesn't and um, on any tape recorder therefore you can hack the read head to send its signal straight to an amplifier uh, or a preamp and then an amplifier perhaps depending on how much signal strengthening you need. Um, I'll just demonstrate that now because on my real free real recorder I don't need to actually hack into the uh, tape head here to do this. Uh, on the side here I'll just show you the connections. I've got a connection called monitor that is to record uh, no sorry to, to monitor the uh, to listen to the playhead while you're recording so you can hear what you're recording. Uh, there's radio which is an input for a mono signal. There is a uh, mic which is another input for a mono signal but microphone level and line level. There's stereo output. Uh, this is a mono device actually but it does have a stereo output. It can play two tracks at the same time and this is the interesting one. Uh, and then we've got speaker which is after the amplifiers in after the amplifier in the uh, tape recorder but stereo is straight from the tape head so this goes tape head stereo then it goes to the amplifier then it goes to the speakers that is the 
way the signal flows inside of this device. So the stereo output is purely the passive sound output from the read head, which is really, really cool. So I can plug this in now. This is just a, is this a TRS cable, but I'm just plugged it into a mono channel on my mixer now. I could have done a, a Y splitter cable, but I'm not, I don't need to do that for this particular demonstration, I don't think. Um, also, it's not that interesting because um, at the moment, the stereo will read out two tracks from the tape, but because this has been recorded on a different tape recorder that has a different order of tracks, uh, this is a four track, um, what happens now is that the two tracks that you can hear with the stereo output are actually two different recordings uh, in this particular case. Okay, what else do we need to uh, make this work? So now this goes into my mixer and the output of the mixer goes into a recorder. Um, and the mixer has the gain cranked up quite a bit for the uh, when the signal comes into the mixer and then it's just set normally after that. Um, Right, so what else do we need? If we do like this, now nothing happens. And that is because the tape read head has not been engaged. I'll just remove this now so you can see the mechanism. So here's the read head here. And at the moment it is not engaged. But if we push play, now it's engaged. Uh, and we can do like this, although, and you can get sound. But of course now it is quite hard work moving it because the capstan is engaged. So I'm going to bypass the capstan by moving the tape over here. Uh, of course now it's a bit loose on the read head, so I'll do the play again. Now it'll move quite freely. So. And we can play the tape manually. Uh, without any amplification in the device itself. Um, so this is uh, something that is really, really, really useful for experimental music, for instance, um, because what I can do now is I can record something on the reel-to-reel -reel tape on my other functioning reel-to-reel -reel recorder. Um, and for instance, I could uh, record a synthesizer sound of a single note, for instance. Um, and what you can do with that is that you can vary the playback speed. And when you move it slowly, it's a deep tone. When you move it faster, it's a and it goes up the faster you move. Um, well, this is really, really useful, useful kind of effect. And you can do so much fun stuff with it, and it can make some really nice, nice effects. So my plan for this is uh, that I will move the tape read head onto a kind of on a wooden board, presumably, and I will create some spindles for the tape reels um, and then that will just have a simple output connection like this. Of course it would be stereo um, that I can connect to my, um, my mixer and I can use that in my music. So that's a nice little thing that lots of people don't realize about tape is that the read head is passive, very useful. And that's all I wanted to show you today. Um, so nice and, and simple little little trick. So if you have any old tape recorders uh, that don't work, you can actually hack them to become a passive playback device that you can move manually um, to use it for special effects in your music. Right, so... Um, Thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this and that you found it useful or uh, something that you maybe maybe something you want to try yourself. This is great fun. So um, I will, of course, make more videos about this particular project uh, when I've done more about it. But um, at the moment, of course, I've 
got this technique uh, firmly connected to a really heavy uh, tape recorder but if I take the spools uh, or create spindles and move just the playheads uh, and whatever else I need to make it, the tape run smoothly across it and if I take that to uh, just put it on a wooden in a wooden box or something like that it will make a nice small light device that I can use uh, for my music and I'm really looking forward to doing that and uh, adding that as a sound source to uh, to what I'm doing um, of course it would be a little bit more complex to uh, add power to that uh, equation and actually uh, be able to use record and delete as well that is uh, quite a bit more complicated and perhaps something I shouldn't get into quite yet but I will look into that too uh, for the moment I think I'll be quite happy being able to play back a tape on a uh, man no, what you device no. so yeah thanks for watching and goodbye for now bye bye